This house is mine now, mom. You can't come in anymore. Your key won't work, so you might as well throw it away. My daughter laughed when she saw me holding the key. My things were piled up by the door. I didn't understand why my daughter was treating me like this, especially when I was still sad about my husband's death. I felt lost and confused. My name is Susan, and I'm 60 years old. My husband died recently after being sick for a long time. Many people came to his funeral and shared memories of him. We said goodbye to him with smiles instead of tears, just like he would have wanted. But even with all the support, I still felt very sad. We have a daughter named Emily. She got married and moved far away. And we haven't seen her much lately, even during holidays. She left quickly after briefly coming to her father's funeral. Before Emily got married, she was very close to us. She always said she couldn't stand the idea of living far away from us, even though we encouraged her to live independently after finding a job. She believed that meals tasted better when the family ate together. I usually came home late from work, so we made sure to have meals together on my days off. Maybe Emily said this to cheer up her father, who was getting weaker because of his illness. We were really happy and thankful for Emily's thoughtfulness. Then, Emily suddenly told us she was getting married and quickly got the marriage paperwork done. After that, she left our house in a rush. We were confused by her sudden decision. We only met her partner once and had a brief conversation with them. It seemed like they truly loved each other, and we only wished for Emily's happiness without interfering in their relationship. However, a few months after getting married, Emily stopped talking to us altogether. We worried a lot and kept sending her messages and calling her every day to check if she was okay. But she didn't reply to any of our messages or calls. Finally, when she did answer, she sounded annoyed and told us to stop bothering her. She even joked about only talking to us if we sent her money. During the day, she sounded like she was drunk and slurred her words. My husband heard all of this and just sighed deeply. Emily's behavior seemed to be influenced by her husband, Ole. After that, my husband never brought up Emily again. Some years later, Emily shamelessly asked us for money because she was having financial problems. That was the last time she and her father saw each other. Over the years, my husband and I made many memories together. We traveled and picked up new hobbies whenever he was well enough. Eventually, my husband passed away. When I came back home from his funeral, I was shocked to see movers directed by Emily piling up my belongings outside. She told them to just stack everything in a corner. When she saw me, she said, Well, Mom, this isn't your home anymore. I've packed up your things. You'll have to find somewhere else to live before it starts raining and everything gets wet. Emily, why are you doing this? What's going on? Please, tell me what's happening. I was just so confused, not understanding anything. What's there to explain? You already know, don't you? This house is supposed to go to Emily after me. Don't act like you don't get it. Emily said this, and then a big man stepped out from behind her. It was because of him that Emily changed. His name is Ali, and he's Emily's husband. Meeting him changed Emily completely. We were introduced to him as a regular guy who worked at a company. But later we found out he was involved in shady business stuff. When we learned about this, we couldn't understand how our honest Emily ended up with someone like Ali. And we were really worried. Emily and Ali kept us away from them. But a few years ago, they suddenly came to our house and shamelessly asked my husband for money. It shook me deeply, but my husband stayed calm and mentioned a will that even I didn't know about back then. It clearly said that this house would go to Emily and everything else to me. Now that dad has passed away, the house belongs to Emily, so outsiders should leave quickly. You have no right to live here. Don't pretend you've forgotten. Ali kicked my things aside and sneered, but you can't just show up here all of a sudden. Seeing my stuff piled outside, I didn't know what to do. I felt completely lost. Now, now, Ole, don't be so harsh. Mom shouldn't stay here, but we're still family, right? Emily said this as she came closer to me while I held onto the key. Don't be so sad. You'll always be my mom. You can use this key to come to the house anytime. Don't feel too down. 
Then she took the key from my hand and threw it as far as she could. What's the matter with you? The key flew through the air and disappeared. I was shocked by Emily's unexpected action. Turning back to her, I said, I'm sorry about that. Upon closer inspection, I realized that the key was already useless. I forgot we changed the locks earlier. There was no point in you holding onto it, so I threw it away for you. Don't act like I've done something terrible. It's not that big of a deal. Emily and Ole looked at me in disbelief and burst into laughter. Emily's face, now completely different from before she got married, showed that she would do anything for her own benefit. I felt tears starting to form. Then I remembered my husband's gentle smile, as if he was telling me to stay strong. Emily, I understand what you're trying to say, but you're getting the wrong idea. This isn't the right place to talk. Let's go inside. I urged Emily and Oli to come inside, but they resisted. We're still moving in, and don't act like you're in charge, telling us where to talk. This isn't your house anymore. You need our permission to come in. Ali snapped back. Faced with Ali's rudeness, I insisted. We need to discuss this house. It's not yours yet. I'm just about to explain, Emily interrupted. I've called someone who can explain it clearly, and he'll be here soon. Let's go inside and have some tea. If you keep refusing, I'll call the police. Don't make me say it again. This house doesn't belong to Emily. If you understand, come inside quickly. If you try anything, I'll be the one calling the police, I said firmly, unsettling them a bit. Well, it might be the last time we listen to an old woman's nonsense. You're getting old anyway. We'll hear you out this time. But if you talk nonsense, you'll have to pay for wasting our time, Ali threatened, sitting on the sofa with his legs crossed. Emily gave me a similar glare. It seemed like they had threatened people like this before to get what they wanted. This made me feel sad. Soon, the doorbell rang, and I let a man into the living room. He was the lawyer who had been there when my husband shared the details of the will. You're the lawyer from before, right? What are you trying to say? We've seen the will that says this house goes to Emily, and Dad said so. That's the truth, isn't it? Ali argued. As I mentioned earlier, there was a misunderstanding before. The will includes a condition, and if that condition happens, the inheritance changes, the lawyer clarified. Why are you confusing us with all these complicated terms? Emily responded in frustration. Seeing their confusion, the lawyer took over to explain. A conditional bequest with revocation means the will has conditions. In your father's will, the condition was that Susan could stay in the house as long as she's healthy. Emily would only inherit it if Susan couldn't live there anymore due to health issues or passed away. Your father was very clear about this. Ali and Emily looked completely confused. Did he really say that? Even if he did, we wouldn't remember. What's this talk about revocation? Emily shook her head in disbelief. Okay, then what about those conditions? Ali asked, sounding a bit shaken but still defiant. By trying to kick Susan out of the house, you violated the conditions of the will. Because of that, Emily lost her right to inherit the house. The lawyer explained straightforwardly. Wait, so you're saying I can't inherit just because of that? That's ridiculous. Emily exploded in frustration. That's the essence of this will. Breaking that condition, whether it's minor or major, leads to revocation, the lawyer explained calmly. When did we ever break that condition? Can you prove it? Ali leaned in, clearly trying to intimidate the lawyer. The lawyer cleared his throat. There was a moving truck outside, arranged by you two, wasn't it? You were trying to move your things in and live here without Susan's consent. Don't act like we did something wrong. We told mom about it. She just forgot and panicked on her own. That's not our fault, Emily protested. Such childish excuses don't work in the adult world. Not only did you move in without permission, but you also threw my belongings outside. Telling me to leave quickly, the lawyer replied sternly. I never said that. You're the one lying. I can't believe my own mother would make up such accusations. If you keep this up, I'll sue you. Do you want that? Being sued by your own daughter is the last thing you want, right? So take back what you said. Emily threatened 
her voice filled with anger. The lawyer remained composed and pulled out his phone. We can't retract the truth. Multiple witnesses saw and heard you telling Susan to leave. We've even recorded their testimonies. He played a video with statements from movers and neighbors. Everyone's stories match. They all say you two told Susan to leave. You could have paid them to say that. How can we trust this? Stop making a fool of us. Ollie accused, but the lawyer ignored him. Instead, he produced a key. Emily, you took the key from Susan and threw it away, which was witnessed by many. I found this key exactly where it was described to be. Changing the locks means Susan can't enter or live here, breaking the condition that she can stay as long as she's healthy. So, you violated the terms of the inheritance. Don't spout whatever you want. If I get serious, I can ensure a lawyer like you never works again. Despite Allie's loud threats, the lawyer remained calm and continued. Therefore, this house will never belong to Emily, and you have no right to live here. Now please remove your belongings and return Susan's immediately. If you delay or try to stay, we'll report a breaking and entering crime to the police. You have two hours. Begin now. The lawyer clapped his hands sharply and checked the time on his wristwatch. Police, you say? Such nonsense won't intimidate me. Ali blustered, but the lawyer countered. I'm a professional. This is not a lie. Getting in trouble with the police over this would only cause more problems for you. Even Oli seemed to understand that this wasn't an empty threat. Oh no! Oli and Emily began sweating profusely and quickly got up to start moving their things. It seemed Ole was more bark than bite, like a big guy with no courage. I'm sorry. We'll put everything back right away, so please don't call the police, okay? Please? Emily pleaded sweetly with the lawyer and yelled at the movers outside to reload the truck. But they refused, saying there was no such agreement. In the end, Ollie had to rent a car and somehow managed to load their belongings. Just loading isn't enough. You must put everything back the way it was. If Susan's belongings are damaged or dirty, clean them up. Any damage, and we'll report property damage and seek compensation, the lawyer reiterated, pushing Oli and Emily to restore everything within two hours after loading their belongings. After loading their belongings, Emily tearfully asked Oli, Now that we've packed up, what do we do? How should I know? It's because of your dad's strange will. Emily sharply retorted, blaming Oli for not paying attention to the will properly. Despite their argument, they drove off, leaving the scene. I thanked the lawyer profusely and returned to my home filled with memories of my husband, feeling relieved. Later, I heard that Oli and Emily had caused trouble in their previous town and moved to our house, almost like a secret escape. They had targeted me for inheritance money, but now they were gone. Emily, staying with Ole, seemed destined for a life of repeating mistakes. It pained me, but it was the path Emily chose. If they ever regretted their actions and wanted to live honorably, I'd be willing to help. My husband had mentioned something like this. For now, I'll enjoy my time in our shared house, perhaps even trying skydiving, something my husband had wanted to do. Looking up at the stars in the night sky, I felt my husband encouraging me, and I gently wiped away a tear.